Guys, just real quick before we start the video, I'd just like to give you a huge thank you out to everybody who's checked out the Sun and Moon giveaway video until now. If you have not yet shared the video and posted the link to your share in the comments section down below, please do so to enter to win. That is all. Enjoy the video. What's up guys, welcome back for another live in the UU tier, of course the UU suspect test, currently suspect testing High Dragon, and uh, this today we're going to be playing off of the opposite side of the argument a little bit, we're going to be discussing how High Dragon uh, has its uh, wall breaking capabilities and how it's able to 2 hit KO everything in the tier and that's why it's being suspect tested, because if you look at it realistically, Without uh, Hydreigon, yes, a lot more Pokemon would run wild, such as the Choice Banded Metagross that we're using today. I just had a test battle and I didn't even have to bring out Metagross, but if I did it would have just torn through my opponent's team. But um, Hydreigon has the capability, because of its coverage and because of the different sets that it can run, you basically have to sack off a Pokemon to find out what set it is and then you can start playing around it. So you automatically, when there's, an, when there's a high dragon on the opposing side, you're at a 6-5 deficit. So yes, there are reasons why it should not be banned, but there are also a lot of very good reasons why it should. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a difficult vote. I think it's gonna be very uh, very down the middle for when uh, when people actually did, uh, end up voting on it. I'm gonna try to, to vote on it because I wanna keep it in the tier. Uh, that's just my humble opinion. If you guys disagree with me, be free to uh, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Uh, I know Jose is very strong about it getting banned. If any of you uh, agree with Jose, then let uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, let's just hop into this live. So I built this team really quickly. Uh, it's got a pretty good matchup against a lot of variants in, uh, in UU, a lot of different teams. Got Choice Banded Metagross over here. Able to hit extremely hard now with Zen Headbutt. Because of the lack of dark types in the tier, there's really only Crocodile that you see get a lot of play. Perhaps Umbreon as well. But for the most part, you're able to spam either Zen Headbutt or Hammer Arm. Meteor Mash, of course, is there as its other stab. And Bullet Punch for priority on the team. Choice Banded Bullet Punch can clean up a team relatively easily with Hazards up, which is what we have over here on the right side. Rhyperior, Tentacruel, and Chestnut creating a uh, spike stacking core. Uh, Life Orb Elf with U-Turn, Flamethrower, Dazzling Gleam, and Psychic. Very nice coverage. And of course, Magneton to trap steel types like my opponent's Ferrith, uh, Ferrithorn, <laughs> Fortress. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty solid team. I like it anyway. So on my opponent's side, I can definitely see the Beedrill lead. Uh, that's uh, kind of obvious. Um, I want to lead with Rhyperior to counter that. Uh, get up my rocks as quickly as possible and start phasing him. I think that'll do the most damage to my opponent's team. Breaking the Sturdy on Fortress and getting a lot of damage off on Chandler and Beedrill would be great. Uh, on my opponent's Beedrill, he is just going to attack this turn. He's just going to U-turn out for sure. Uh, so I'm just going to set up Stealth Rocks. Uh, that's going to do actually a very hefty amount, more than I expected, because this is... Well, this is a specially defensive right here, so that's to be expected, actually. Um, now, obviously, I could trap my opponent right here, but what I actually want to do is Earthquake first, in case he wants to... Uh, one, in case he's Shed Shell, so I wouldn't be able to trap him with Magneton. And two, just to uh, to break the Sturdy before I go into Magneton. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to go hard into Magneton now. He could predict that and switch out or go for the Rapid Spin, uh, which would be a very good play, as he does. Uh, but we are going to be able to... Actually, we're carrying Hidden Power Grass on this for uh, Swampert, I just realized. Uh, but that's okay, I'm going to be able to get off a Thunderbolt, uh, should Oko the Fortress, because its Spadef is not that great, as you can see. Much uh, much rather have uh, HP Fire right there, just to ensure the kill, but it's what you got to work with. Um, Swampert does come in. Swampert doesn't really threaten Chestnut, though, so this is fine. This is an easy switch for me. Uh, he could be Mega, but he does go Beedrill. That's a great play. We're just going to go for a Spiky Shield, uh, just to get off a little bit of Residual on this thing. Uh, I don't know if it can knock me out with Poison Jab necessarily, because we are fully physically defensive. He does go for Jab. He's going to take a little bit of uh, damage there, 12%, always nice on Beedrill. Let's just check it out. Beedrill, uh, Mega Beedrill versus Chestnut Beedrill. Uh, physically defensive. Poison Jab does 65 to 76, so not enough, uh, which means I want to Leech Seed this thing. As he goes for knockoff, actually, gets rid of our leftovers, so that's going to, uh, the Leech Seed is obviously going to mitigate that damage. And he's not going to be able to freely U-turn out because I can just spiky shield up on this thing again. Uh, so he might have to switch out directly into Chandelure, which is what I was expecting, yep. And, uh, that's fine because I can just spiky shield again right here just to see what he locks himself into. Because I expect him to, uh, to just attack this turn. 
I don't have a very good ghost switching, so this is a little bit problematic. He does go for sub, actually. That's that's a little bit uh, scary right there. But I do have a Roaring Tentacruel, so it's not too bad. I also have a Haze Tentacruel. Uh, sorry, a Roaring uh, Rhyperior and a Haze Tentacruel. So it's not, uh, it's not too bad. It's not the worst situation. Uh, I'm just going to go into... Um, I'm gonna go into Rhyperior here and roar him out. I'm gonna take the spike damage, unfortunately. We should be able to take a plus one Shadow Ball uh, because we are specially defensive, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, also, I can break this thing sub with a Rock Blast, granting I hit it, of course. Let me just see something, how many uh, Rock Blasts I need to uh, kill this thing with Rhyperior. How many hits, I mean. Uh, Great Wall of China, that's the set that we are. Rock Blast, this is with three hits, does 103. So, two hits do 68 to 82. First one breaks the sub, second one does about 40%. So, if I get three hits, I have a chance to knock it out. So, I'm just going to go for the Rock Blast. Shadow Ball shouldn't be able to knock us out, as you can see, uh, thanks to the leftovers. We are able to hit this thing three times, get a crit on the third one, and knock out a Chandelure. So, a little bit fortunate for us that we were able to get the, that multi-hit right there. Because I would have struggled a little bit with that thing, seeing as it had a, uh, a Calm Mind up. I mean, I still had Tentacruel in the back, so it's not a big deal, but... Definitely, uh, that was very scary. Um, regular Pert in the back, perhaps Spec Sylveon, and maybe uh, possibly Choice Bandit Conkelder, I'm thinking, for extra power to support Beedrill. Uh, be able to knock out the things that Beedrill can't and takes damage from, like Rocky Helmet Mons. Uh, I'm tempted to just uh, go for Stealth Rocks right here. He should be faster than us in theory. Um, and I don't really have a reason to keep this with a spike up. Then again, I could just go Tentacruel. I'm just expecting a knockoff. That's why I'm, I'm playing like this. Um, I could let this thing go down. Like, rocks are really important because of the Beedrill, which is why I don't want to let this go down. But it's at 12.2, so if I don't get off my spin... But I should be able to get off my spin. I'm going to go into Tentacruel. He should just go for a knockoff here. Uh, he does go for the Ice Punch, actually. Which, uh, luckily he doesn't freeze us, so we are able to Rapid Spin on this turn. As opposed to having to Scald first. So that's very nice. Gonna get rid of this Spike, be able to bring in uh, Rhyperior a little bit later. Uh, maybe get it healed up. He does have Thunder Punch, and he does seem to be Sheer Force Life Orb. Uh, because I don't think that would have killed us, because we are very physically defensive. So now I have to think about this play. My opponent doesn't have a very good switch into a Zelf, actually. So I'm just gonna go into a Zelf right here and just fire off a Psychic. And once I get the Swampert weakened, uh, that's pretty much GG. He does go into Sylveon. This is a specially defensive variant, or just a defensive variant in general. So I can pretty much... Um, hmm. I'm going to U-turn to make sure that he doesn't pull a double, because he's been playing like that a lot this game. Uh, we are very low on the ladder, but a lot of very good players right now. Uh, I'm just going to go hard into Metagross, because Metagross pretty much picks up a kill. Uh, he's going to go for a Baton Pass, actually, so very good play. I could see the... I can see the Beedrill coming in, for sure. The Swampert actually chooses to come in. So this is pretty good because, like I said before, if I get damage off on this thing, it's amazing. I'm going to go hard into Chestnut. If my opponent decides to double into Beedrill, that's fine. But that's a very risky play because if I were to go for a Zen HUD butt, that would be a dead Beedrill. So he does go for the Skull. does get the burn. It's not a huge deal uh, because at this point, what I'm going to do is start setting up spikes because I need to get damage off on his team somehow. And uh, he knows that uh, Beedrill... Like, he knows that uh, the Beedrill uh, can't attack me necessarily because it's going to take extra damage when it does that. I'm just going to go for a Leech Seed here. I'll see if he wants to switch into Sylveon. I think that would be his play. Yep, there we go. And uh, we're going to get Seeds off on this thing, which is pretty nice. We're going to heal up our Chestnut a little bit. Not that it matters too much. I'm just using this thing to Spike Stack at this point. Uh, he can pass Wishes off into whatever he wants. He should, in theory, just attack me here. To make sure I don't go into Metagross for free, but he does choose to wish up. Uh, he may want to wish his Beedrill back up to full, which is why I'm actually just going to Leech Seed on this turn. And if he stays in to Hyper Voice us, uh, which he does, he is going to go up to near full, but now Metagross guaranteed gets a kill at this point because his Swampert is relatively, uh, well, not relatively low when it comes in, but if it takes a Zen Headbutt, it's pretty much dead, so... Uh, I am just going to go for the Zen to try to catch the uh, the Swampert right here. As he does go into it, awesome. So we weaken this thing, and we put it in range of uh, another Zen plus uh, Bullet Punch. I'm kind of wanting to risk the burn right here. It's risk versus reward, because if I do get the burn... Uh, if he doesn't get the burn, then I win with Bullet Punch Spam. 
but if he does get it, then I have a potential to lose this game very easily. So I really want to just pull a double out into uh, Rhyperior potentially. How much is a Sylveon at now? 88, and how much did our Psychic do? Very little, 34%. That's a little bit risky. Um, I think my better play is to stay in and risk it. Uh, he does go for the Scald. Does he get the burn? He does not. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to switch out into Rhyperior. And now we can spam Bullet Punch on his team. It should be able to knock out the Beedrill from half because we are banded. Uh, it's just the Metagross that I'm worried about a little bit. He does go for the Scald. Knocks out Rhyperior. That's absolutely fine. We are going to hit up uh, Zelf at this point. And we are just going to go for the Psychic, I believe. Actually, U-Turn may be my better play because that ensures that his Sylveon doesn't come in for free. And that also means that, once again, we can just spam Bullet Punch. His Swampert dies to Spikes, so he shouldn't want to conserve it here. Actually, with that in mind, because um, he can't wish it up, so I'm not worried about this thing anymore. It's just Beedrill. I don't want Beedrill coming in, you know? Um, yeah, I'm just going to Psychic. I think Psychic is my better play in this case. Uh, he's probably gonna go into Beedrill, because, I mean, why would you want to take a Psychic with anything else, risk a drop? There is Beedrill, and I do not have a switch into this, evidently, so I'm just going to let this go down to a knockoff, that's absolutely fine. I think Metagross knocks it out from here, it should. Beedrill, it's very, very frail. Versus Metagross. All out attacker, very long first battle. Uh, all out attacker, give me a choice band. Choice banded, adamant, adamant. Meteor mash does 200. <laughs> Bullet punch is doing minimum 112 percent. How much do I do to Conkelder? Because I want to know if it can switch into me. Sheer force attacker. It takes 43 to 51. So yeah, I think Metagross just wins. Uh, I'm just gonna click Bullet Punch. If he brings in Conk, then I swap out and I bring it back into... Okay, he's going to protect. That doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go for another Bullet Punch. It will knock out the Sylveon at the range it's at, because it's a super effective hit, clearly. Uh, and Conk Elder will be two hit KO'd. So, this is pretty solid. He does go into Sylveon to sack it. That's absolutely fine. As now... He did make the correct play, because now I have to play around with... Uh, with Conkelder getting back all its health, and then Beedrill outspeeding me if I want to lock myself into a move other than Bullet Punch. So that was the correct play, was to sack off Sylveon there. It was a very smart play. Does Drain Punch take me out? It does 43 to 50, we're at 44. So it should be able to knock us out here. Uh, we do have 4 in defense, just like that. Mm, that's Life Orb, right? Life Orb, Adamant, Sheer Force. That's if he's Adamant. Which, if he is, then Sylveon always guaranteed outspeeds him. Whereas, if he's Jolly and he invests 252, he has a chance to outspeed some variants. So, uh, if he's if he's Jolly, Life Orb, max attack, then his Drain Punch is actually like a 50-50 roll. It's more to my favor, actually. But the problem is, we're going to hit him first. So, I think this game is lost because of that. Just gonna bullet punch. We do get a crit on that turn. He goes for the drain punch. He does knock us out, unfortunately. But the fact that his Beedrill has a uh, knockoff kind of indicates that he may not have Drill Run as his last move, because you kind of always need Protect on Beedrill. And if this Conk Elder does not have Mock Punch, we might still win this. Let's test it out. He doesn't seem to have Mach Punch, and if this Beedrill's only attacking move is Knock Off, it should not be able to kill us from this range. Beedrill versus Magneton, uh, UU Choice Specs, Knock Off does 50 to 60, and this Thunderbolt will always kill. Yep, there we go, he didn't have a Drill Run. Awesome! Cool, so we're able to knock out the Beedrill, and we do take that first game. Let's move on to the next one really quickly because we're already uh, 14 minutes deep, and we've only gotten one game. I wanted to make this a little bit of a faster live, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. My opponent has an Azelf, which I'm realizing now is a little bit of an issue to this team. However, Azelf shouldn't be able to do too much to Magneton outside of maybe a fire move, and uh, I could probably just lead with it, honestly. Uh, Rhyperior is not bad either. I can just Rock Blast to break the Sash. 
Uh, alternatively, his lead could be Dawn Fan, which I don't mind too much if I lead Rhyperior. I think Rhyperior is just all around my best solid lead. Uh, I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks right here. If he wants to go for Earthquake turn 1, that's perfectly fine. I'll be able to eat that up because we are solid rock. And we'll be able to uh, get up our rocks. So as you can see, that does relatively nothing. Able to keep Rhyperior healthy. And uh, kind of just want to go into Chestnut here, I think is my best play. Start setting up some spikes. Could go for a Rapid Spin on me, though. So uh, I think I want to go for a... I think he's going to Rapid Spin here. I think that makes the most sense. So I'm just going to go for a Spiky Shield on this turn. Expecting the Rapid Spin. He actually goes for Rocks. Okay, so that's a good play. Uh, let's go for Drain Punch, because I want to I want to break this thing sturdy first. Its last move should be Rapid Spin. He does have a Blastoise, but it's probably Mega for attacks without Rapid Spin. I could see that for sure. It's, uh, it's a cool team too. I like it. So a lot of uh, Pokemon prosper a lot more with uh, with High Dragon gone, like Gudra, Conkeldur uh, does a lot better. Like there's so many things that do very well. He has Gooey. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for a layer of spike, honestly, at this point. Because, yes, he can flamethrower me. It's going to do a lot. But I get up a second layer, and this is great because Donphan's Sturdy is broken, and everything's taking a tremendous amount of damage. His only Pokemon that's not grounded is his Elf. Uh, the same applies to me, of course, as you can see, but I think uh, I think it's much better to have a spike up on his side. I'm just going to go into Tentacruel because Tentacruel takes any hit from this thing, including a Draco Meteor. He goes for another flamethrower. That's absolutely fine. He maybe specs. Uh, I need to calculate that damage, actually. Let's check out Gudra. Choice Specs versus Chestnut, physically defensive. Uh, Fire Blast would do that much. How much would Flamethrower do? So, no, I don't think he Specs. No, because it would have killed us. Uh, he's probably some AV variant. I'm just going to go for Rapid Spin, because he doesn't have a Spin Blocker on his team. He's going to go into Blastoise. That's absolutely fine. I should have a Spin Blocker on this team, honestly. Probably over a Zelf would be nice. Something like a Hard Hitting Ghost. Perhaps Chandelure. Um, wouldn't be bad, but I need the speed. I need the speed on this team. I'm just gonna go for, um, honestly, a Scald. He's, uh, he is Mega. Does he have Rapid Spin on this thing? Let's see. We do get the burn. Uh, he goes for the Dark Pulse, which is gonna do a good amount. Uh, not enough, though. I'm gonna go for a Toxic Spike, because, basically, my game plan here is going to be, uh, well, never mind. He does have Rapid Spin on his Blastoise. I was gonna say to, uh, to make sure that Donphan can't spin by bringing in threats like a Zelf against it and whatnot. But I'm just going to keep going for Toxic Spike. I want to keep that up at least. He goes for a Dark Pulse, that's fine. And here I'm going to swap out into Chestnut on the following Dark Pulse, or Aura Sphere, or whatever he wants to go for. Uh, dark Pulse is not going to be enough to knock us out, and the next turn of Burn is going to be enough to knock him out, so that's very nice. Uh, his Spinner is almost gone, it will die to Burn, so I kind of want to conserve this. And maybe swap out to Tentacruel, because I can get back up spikes on the Dawn Fan. It has no way to knock me out outside of Ice Shard, which I can Spiky Shield on the first turn, and it won't kill me on the next turn. So, I think Tentacruel is my play, just to make sure. He uh, he Dark Pulses. I could have Spiky Shielded there as well, which probably would have been my better play. I didn't even think about that. But um, now Metagross has uh, has a field day, man, actually. Let's, uh, let's go into Metagross. As he goes into Mean Shao, that's absolutely fine. Uh, he can knock us off, which is kind of what I'm scared of. Uh, I think a knockoff might be able to take us out, actually. Uh, Metagross. Uh, where is Metagross? Metagross, Metagross, Metagross. I think I was calculating with uh, Mega Metagross before, by the way, guys. Um, mean Shao. I'm not sure. You guys will let me know. Uh, Choice Scarf, let's say knockoff does 37 to 43, actually. So that's not too much. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. We can, we can definitely take any one, of it, uh, any one of its hits. And I can just go for a... Does Choice Banded Bullet Punch take it out? Hold on a second. Meteor Mash does that much. If I'm Choice Banded, it shouldn't. Choice Banded Adamant. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, I'm just going to go for Mash. He goes for a U-turn. So we're going to get off a huge hit on something here. Regardless of what it is. We might even be able to knock something out here. If it's Gudra, it's definitely getting knocked out from the range it's at. If it's Don Fen, I don't think it's two hit KO'd. You can correct me on that. But uh, it is going to be Conkeldur. This is going to take 51% from that hit. Conkeldur is not faster than Metagross in no universe outside of a Choice Scarf. So I'm just going to go for another Meteor Mash, knock out his Conkeldur, and uh, we're looking good. Now I can expect Gudra to come in here for sure. But I think, I feel like this thing is choiced in some way. 
because it switched out on me before. He is going to go for Flamethrower, that's going to do absolutely nothing to Rhyperior, and once again, we are specially defensive. So I'm going to get back up my rocks at this point, his spinner is gone. He does go for a Draco Meteor, unfortunately misses, and uh, getting a little bit of uh, Pokemon MD luck on my side right here. We're going to uh, Earthquake on this turn, he does go for Flamethrower, expecting me to switch. I am not going to switch, I'm just going to knock out your Gudra, good sir. And uh, we do have our Toxic Spike and Rocks up, this is going to help us tremendously. The Mean Shao didn't take damage before. I think it's Choice Scarf Reckless. Uh, what I'm going to do is just Roar. If he goes for a high jump kick, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I can just go into Chestnut now, scare this thing out with a spiky shield, and I'm actually going to go for Leech Seed right here. He shouldn't high jump kick because he's going to take a tremendous amount of damage. He does go into his Elf. That's good. We are able to seed that up, and uh, I don't think we have our leftovers anymore. We don't. Uh, this should be his Rocker in theory. So I just want to go for a uh, for a layer of spikes here. Does go for a nasty plot actually? Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna get in, gain back a little bit more health. I don't think I need magneton, so I'm just gonna spiky shield on this turn. What I'm gonna do is uh, ensure that I can uh, knock this thing out with Metagross's bullet punch, which I should be able to at this point. He goes for a psychic. We're gonna gain back a little bit of health. That did uh, so much damage. That was insane. Uh, <laughs> and we're just going to uh, we're just gonna volt switch here. Uh, he shouldn't think Scarf. Yeah, okay, there we go. And uh, now we can go into Metagross and just fire off a Bullet Punch at this point. Uh, he might think that I don't have it, but I definitely have it. Yep, goodbye Azelf, and that was the biggest threat left. The Mean Shout is not a threat, not while I have Bullet Punch. It should take it out from this range, right? We calculated. Let's see. Adamant, Choice Banded, give me Bullet Punch. It should do half of what that Meteor Mash is doing up there. Uh, 61 to 73. So, I don't need this, per se, because his elf can beat the, uh, the Dawn fan. Well, not if it's knockoff. Chestnut can definitely beat the Dawn fan. I'm just gonna go for it. Bullet Punch. Yep. Mean Shell goes down. And now I can even keep Metagross, just switch out into his elf to get off a hit. Uh, he might just go for a knockoff, but definitely Earthquake is his better play. And, uh, I'm just gonna go out into his elf here. Uh, he does go for Earthquake, awesome, we're able to dodge that, and we'll go for a Psychic to weaken this thing. Hopefully it's not some weird Rest variant, and we are able to just straight up knock out the Dawn Fan. Power of Life Orb Pazelf, man. Very, very strong Pokemon right here. And uh, we'll get one last one, we have time. We're at 22 minutes, I'm gonna try to keep this to about 26, 27. Uh, be able to get a quick battle as our last one. Opponent has a very cool Rain team. This might be a little bit tough for us to beat. Uh, because I do not have good water switchings outside of Chestnut and Tentacruel, which get worn down extremely quickly because they don't have any reliable recovery. So this is going to be a little bit tough. His rain setter uh, is Tornadus, um, perhaps Swampert to set up its own rain. Uh, maybe even, maybe even uh, Heliolisk. I think I'm going to lead off with Magneton here, uh, expecting the Tornadus to lead. Yep. And I really just want to hit Power Grass on the first turn, guys. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I really do. Uh, he shouldn't want to stay in here. I'm just going to go for the Hidden Power Grass. Okay, so he was really, he was willing to risk his Tornadus turn one, which is fine. Uh, I know that this thing gets Grass Knot, so I'm kind of scared of it. Uh, I kind of just want to go into Tentacruel right here. And I am going to go into Tentacruel because I'm able to eat up uh, special hits. He does go for the U-turn, which Swampert. Uh, should be able to outspeed me unless it's adamant. Other than that, Heliolisk is really the only thing that can knock me out on his team. And Heliolisk should be Life Orb, in theory. Let's see. Let's go into Chestnut just to test it out. He shouldn't Hyper Voice. Okay, never mind. He does just Hyper Voice. Uh, I'm gonna go into our Rhyperior because that looks like Specs damage to me. For sure. Uh, he does just fire off another Hyper Voice. We're able to eat that up. That's absolutely fine. We are going to get up our Stealth Rocks right here. Start to weaken his team on switch-ins because that's really the only thing I can do, guys. Like, there's nothing else I can do. I, I wish I was Rain Dish Tentacruel right now, but Liquidus is just so much better, obviously. That ability is insane. He does go into Swampert, uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a threat, obviously, with its quad effective stab. Um, hmm. Chestnut can definitely eat a hit. I want to burn off the rain a little bit, so I am going to go into Chestnut. And then we're going to go for a spiky shield on the next turn as he attacks. We're going to get hit with a waterfall. Pretty powerful. Uh, but we can just go for a spiky shield now. And then on his following attack, we can probably just switch out into, um, into Tentacruel uh, to eat up the... Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's my play. Going to Tentacruel, eat up the Ice Punch. As he goes for a Waterfall instead. Okay, so good play. Able to cover all options. And now we're going to go into his Elf because I don't want to get Earthquaked. As he is going to set up Rain again. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to be able to knock us out here. That's a little unfortunate. I could have gotten enough a, tox a Toxic Spike there or gone for a Skull to potentially burn this. Uh, I'm just going to go for Psychic. He does go for a Waterfall and is able to knock us out cleanly. Um, does he not have Earthquake? He should have Earthquake. Does Swampert's Earthquake take out Metagross? That's what I need to know right now. Swampert. Mega Swampert. Rain Sweeper. It does. Wow. This thing is way too strong. Way too strong. Um, we are Magnet Pull. We can't do anything there. <sighs> he has to have Earthquake. It wouldn't make any sense for him not to have Earthquake. Alright, well, I'm going Chestnut. I have to Spiky Shield here. I don't have a choice. I have to make him hit himself. He's probably just going to EQ on this turn. Uh, he does go for an Ice Punch. Okay, good. He does take another 12%. Luckily, this is only 5 turn range, so he's only got 2 turns left. So, I can either make a play here and go for the Leech Seed. Um, which is what I think I'm going to do. He does go for the Ice Punch. Okay, so good play. And I don't have Earthquake Switchins anymore, guys. So, I have to sack something. Something is going down here, regardless. Well, I mean, I could make a, a cool play from Rhyperior into uh, Magneton here. Which I think is my best play. Uh, Waterfall shouldn't be able to take us out. He actually does go for the Earthquake, so we would have been able to take that. Uh, I'm going to go into Metagross here, and we're just going to go for the Zen Headbutt. Uh, he does go for the Earthquake and clean knocks us out. So this is going to be a full sweep from Swampert. That's insane. Uh, whoops, wrong move. Yeah, that's uh, that's just going to be a game. Uh, we should have done this a lot sooner. Scalded. Uh, potentially got a burn, but uh, that is going to be GG to my opponent. That is a ridiculous Swampert sweep. So this team is a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, Mega Swampert weak. Uh, he does let a Swampert take damage, but it doesn't matter because we weren't able to Oko it anyway. And he is going to be able to uh, take us out with uh, Waterfall right there. So a little bit of faux pas on my part there. It was a quick game. I will give it that. Uh, my opponent played very well though, so what I'm gonna do is try to uh, ladder up on the suspect test ladder a little bit We're actually at 13 13. Wait a minute. How did we get so high already? What happened? Hold on. Let me just check this out guys um, You you suspect we're currently 18 and 4 What was I using? All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad with that. We'll uh, we'll try to get Rex to be able to vote on um, on the suspect test, I'm going to hit up the forums to see how much I need. I think it's 2400 if I'm not mistaken, if I recall from the last time I laddered for a suspect test. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoy this content. Leave a comment for me down below, of course, letting me know what you think of the Hydreigon suspect test, if you think it should be banned, if you think it should stay, and also what you thought of the team that we used today, what we can do to improve it. I personally think that replacing a Zelf with potentially a Ghost uh, that can take on Mega Swampert would be nice. Uh, perhaps uh, physically defensive Jellicent wouldn't be bad, but that's kind of redundant with Tentacruel. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you later. Ciao.